Hey everyone, it's Margaret here coming at you with a 2020 aquatic update. Because while we may have been stuck on dry land for some time, researchers have been finding some really cool discoveries in the water world, starting with this guy. Yeah, I know, what is it? Did someone drop their ball of yarn in the ocean? Or maybe two dolphins were having a silly string fight? That would be fun, but nope. This is the longest animal ever discovered. It's called a siphonophore. This noodle guy is made up of millions of interconnected clones called zooids. Each has its own role in the connected colony. The marine organism is related to the jellyfish. At an estimated 150 feet long, this siphonophore is believed to be the longest creature ever recorded. It was discovered off the Ningaloo coast in Western Australia by researchers with the Schmidt Ocean Institute and Western Australian Museum. During March, the team used an underwater robot to complete 20 dives up to 4,500 meters deep and for a total of 181 hours of exploration. The researchers discovered not only the siphonophore, but 30 new underwater species. Now, sticking with Australia, the Great Barrier Reef there is suffering from bleaching. This is according to a March survey of the reef that was done by scientists with the ARC Center of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies at James Cook University. Bleaching is when algae living on a coral reef is pushed out, turning the coral white. See, algae and coral have a symbiotic relationship. Symbiotic means they benefit each other. Without the algae, the coral is more likely to die. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, there are a few things that can cause bleaching to take place. Pollution, too much direct sunlight, and an increase in ocean temperature. See, February had the highest monthly temperatures for the reef since 1900, according to Australia's Bureau of Meteorology. The recent bleaching is the worst that has been seen in the area in at least the last five years, says the ARC Center of Excellence. Their scientists plan to return to the reef later in the year to see if it's had a turn for the good or for the worse. Now, if you want to get involved with helping save the coral reefs, you can, and right from your couch. That's because NASA recently launched NemoNet. The video game lets gamers and citizens unite to mark out where coral reefs are thriving and where they are dying. Really, it's a game you can play on your phone. NASA used specialized cameras attached to drones to collect 3D images of the ocean floor around Puerto Rico, Guam, and American Samoa. Using this footage, game players identify and classify corals. The more players on NemoNet, the more the computer behind it is able to learn on its own and start to map out the world's coral reefs. Pretty cool. Now, before you go and download NemoNet, I've got one last update for you, and it's kind of interesting. Scientists think that crocodiles used to swim in the ocean like dolphins. Weird to think about, right? A study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences examined fossils from ancient crocodiles and believe the creatures moved from a life on land to a life at sea about 182 million years ago. The animals, called the Latosuchians, likely had a body similar to dolphins, but they would breathe through their nostrils, not a blowhole. Well, that's all I have for you today. So, see you later, alligator, or rather, after a while, crocodile.